gonna send these fucking files to Tony so he can do all the fucking editing. But, uh, <laughs> what a little bitch and his man flu. Yeah, it's been it's been like a week and a half now. Yeah, he thinks he's really he's had sick. It? Yeah, yeah, he's he's uh he's been sick for a while now. I think. Uh-huh. I was gonna say, wasn't he sick last week when we recorded? Yeah, he, he was probably he was probably dipping into sickness, and now he's dipping out of it. So. <laughs> yeah, good. Point. I knew man flu was bullshit. <laughs> yes, it, he's making 100%. it up. Hundred percent. He just thinks he's real sick. That's okay. We'll start you know, the show I'm, now. I'm sick too. I'm sick of his bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You know, Tony, Tony's the one who has to do all the editing on this, so. Okay. That's true. You I'm hear this, Tony? You of sick your bullshit, bastard. Tony. We're sick of your bullshit. <laughs> We're all sick of it. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the only comedy podcast on the internet. This is the Coffee Jelly Hour. We're preaching caffeine, motherfuckers. I'm Matt, and uh, Ace and Seth are here. <laughs> Seth. Say hi, guys. Not how he say Seth. it. Seth. Seth's here. Seth. 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 It's me. Oh, I'll say hey, it more everybody. like to- I'll say it more like Tony this time. Good day, mate. This is the coffee jelly hour. No, <laughs> that's not really how Tony would say it. Everybody, oh. everybody knows that all British people just talk like the Beatles. Oh Uh-oh. yeah, that's right. They all talk a little bit like Paul McCartney, don't they? Or Ringo, or Paul, or any of the other. I already said Paul. God my, damn it. my favorite thing about Ringo Starr is Ringo Starr doesn't even talk like Ringo Starr anymore, and people still compare <laughs> him to talking like that. <coughs> like when, whenever he has a guest spot on something, they always write him with this kind of like, "Well, chips to you," and he's like, "I don't talk like that anymore." <laughs> no, no, yeah, just, just you know, you're Paul. Ring, Ringo Man. Anyways, uh, mm-hmm. what do we got? What do we got lined up today? Uh, Matt, you said you had something. Not much. Well, I don't, I don't have much, but something interesting <laughs> happened to me. I wanted to ask you guys: Have you ever read a book that you thought the movie turned out better than the book? I know it's not something that really happens ever, but I wanted to see because it happened to me yesterday. I'm I'm curious as to what your example is. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something slightly sacrilegious in a weird mm-hmm. way, and say that I think Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, while a fantastic book, I kind of liked how the movie handled it a bit. It was a bit better paced. Okay, I'll tell I'll say mine in a minute. But Seth, has it ever happened to you? Um. Uh, shoot, not off the top of my head. Okay, well, I listened to the Hellbound Heart yesterday, which is what Hellraiser was based on. And it's a fine little book. It's very, very short. It was only three hours long. And Clive Barker is a fine writer. How but I like Hellraiser the movie better. How was that three hours long? I mean, I've, I've, I've read that story. Uh, when I first read it, it took me about a half an hour. It, it, is oh, wow. a t- it is tiny. It is the tiniest thing. It uh, can't. No, it's definitely unless you read super fast. I mean, it's no, it's no, a novella. It, it, it's, it's it's a tiny novella. It's like thirty five pages. It can't be. I'm gonna look it up right now. <laughs> it is now. the tiny. I I recall because I remember reading it uh, out loud impromptu, and it was it took me no time. Maybe maybe about an hour. Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but I was gonna the, say let me look it up right now. It says it's 186 pages. Okay, well, okay, I'm exaggerating with 30 pages, but 186 pages comparatively <laughs> on, a, on a novel mm-hmm. scale are... T- we're talking tiny, tiny pages. Oh, it's very, very small, but... <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very familiar with Clive Barker's work, and you're right, the movie's better in every way. It, yeah, it's... Well, it, it's... I, I thought about it for a really long time because I listened to it while I was at work. So I listened to it in the morning and then thought about it all day. And I was like, the movie is just... This is a perfect example of how a movie tightened up this storytelling because nothing about the book and the inner workings of the characters, like their, in, you know, their internal monologues and describing their thoughts was all completely pointless. When you watch the movie, you can get their thoughts from a couple lines, their body language, and the way they, like, just from their acting. And I'm like, you know what? Hellraiser is... This has never... Ha- I, I but can't to think be of any fair, other- Hellraiser was written and directed by Clive Barker. Exactly. I know. He, he, I'm not he saying, basically yeah. enhanced... Because the story... The, the, the story suffers from two issues. At the time, he was in the closet. 
I mean, he's really gay, but in the time of the story, he was in the closet. So the story, like, it really goes out on the gay whim a lot. Like, mm-hmm. it talks about the guy jacking off, and it gets really descriptive, and you're like, huh, mm-hmm. how did it, how was anybody surprised when he came out? Yeah. And and, and it, has, it has a lot of, like, it, it, the whole thing about the Hellbound Heart, to me, always seemed to represent, like, that tortured sexuality, because that's, it, it was all, everything was erotic. Everything about it was oh, yeah. erotic. And, and, and the Cenobites were, were non-existent. Uh, their descriptions mm-hmm. were very blasé, and, and it, mm-hmm. it was interesting. The movie did a better job honing it down. Yeah, I just, I felt like there was just, because the characters aren't that deep, and so trying to describe them was, to me, kind of tedious and boring. And I'm like, just all around, this is, I can't remember another book I have read where I have gone and seen the movie and said, yeah, that was better, and Hellraiser just is. <laughs> There are, so. there are, I'm, 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 again, back on King, though, a lot mm-hmm. of his movies have elements to them that are better than the book, but never as a complete package. Oh, no, no, there, not but, at but, all. But, but, I but think there, most of, there are I think the, on the whole, movies based on his work are generally pretty bad. Well, usually, but I, I always appreciate how they do something better than, a, a good example is, uh, the, the emphasis on Pennywise versus it as the monster in the film versus in the book where Pennywise mm. has virtually no presence and I actually thought that that was an enhancement and it, it's weird because I, I, I you mm. can any of his books any of his movie books you could put out that like one thing where it's like well I'm, I'm really like uh, <clears throat> it had this this reoccurring theme of racism uh, oh yeah and and For I sure. really liked it but it was so not integral to the plot. And I was so happy, and I, man, it's, I sound like such a white supremacist saying this, I was happy that most of that was taken out in lieu of mm-hmm. making the movie flow better, because it, it none of it, it was like, it, Stephen well, King... Well, it, it had the, well, it, I'll tell you the part of it that I find the least interesting actually is the parts where Mike Hanlon's dad talks about, like old times in Derry, and I know the point is to illustrate that things in Derry are always shitty every few years, but you're right, they're not necessarily integral to the plot. Yeah, and, and, and the problem is is that they kind of go on and on, and and, 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 and I, I love Stephen King, but he does have that tendency where he just kind of goes off on somewhere, and you're like, where, mm-hmm. where the fuck did those last 100 pages go? Yeah, his, he, his more recent books like, have gotten a lot shorter. He hasn't written anything very, I would say, very, very dense in a while he's, that I can think of. He's also gotten a lot less coked out, though, so... That's true. Uh, but, uh, I, I, and, and Clive Barker, back in Barker, uh, Barker's movie-to-book comparisons are always interesting because his movies uh, largely seem to be more... I don't want to say logical, but they they're they're smoother. Like mm-hmm. I've read Cabal, and I really love Cabal, but I thought the movie is sloppy as the movie was. There is an excellent movie in there of mm-hmm. uh, Nightbreed for anybody who who's in, like like the the the, the movie Nightbreed's fascinating. Rawhead Rex is a much better story. It's much more violent and heartless. Wait, thought, what is Nightbreed? Is based on a one book, of his? Yeah, a book called Cabal. Oh, okay. And Cabal is a really good book. It's another one that... One of my issues with Cabal is that fucking Clive Barker describes his char- a character as he walks in wearing a leather jacket, but then proceeds to describe everything else in just disturbing amounts of detail. And you're like, what? So an amorphous blob walks in with a leather jacket, but the room looks exactly like this. And, and the papers on the desk are exactly like this, and everything is exactly in one way. But the main character is just a cool guy in a jacket. Yeah, but uh, Clive Barker, Stephen King. I'm trying to think of anybody else offhandedly where the books were uh, uh, handled better in film. I'm like trying to think of children's movies specifically. I know, I know, Harry Potter mm-hmm. was an utter mess. I know that anybody who's read the Harry Potter books when they watch the movies, they go like, "Oh, they missed all that stuff." And to be fair, I always use the defense they made the movies before the books were over, so they didn't know what was integral to the plot and what wasn't. Yeah. <clears throat> They just, they were just kind of trying to fucking capitalize on it. Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban was very good, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, the movie Prisoner of Azkaban is really good, so. 
There, yeah, you're right about that for sure. Was I don't know why they didn't like just kind of stick with that director. That was the uh, much more like gothic dark one, right? With like the werewolves and stuff. It, it had a yeah, but it was a it was a theme that really worked with the the book. Well, I, 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 I Harry had the, like this isolation mm -hmm. from everything. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you which you're... Uh, was also echoed with uh, his invisibility cloak too. Um, I'm just analyzing the movie now. No, but you're 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 completely you're, you're completely <laughs> right with the Prisoner of Azkaban because I'm trying to think back on it. I think out of all of them, that was the most stylistic movie. The first the first two films, I believe, or the first one at least, I recall being very almost cliche Hollywood. It was very by the books. It was like, what do we need mm -hmm. to do to make an epic film? Bam, 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 bam. Here's your movie. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it it was a good film, but it just didn't have you know it did it, it was more substance than style. Um, I guess I don't read much. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, like I'm sitting here just like looking at the books on my shelf. Like I don't have any. <laughs> I mean, I have a bunch of fucking overpriced textbooks. Oh yeah, <laughs> those well. are shitty. Yeah, the movie adaptations are terrible. <laughs> very true, very true. <clears throat> also, I, I zoned out for a while there. I'm just sitting here like I'm listening to a podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I forgot I'm a part of it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm really... Because I wasn't expecting this one. This is something I would actually think ahead of time. Because uh, mm -hmm. my go-to is... Yeah, the, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you should have given us this. No, no. My go-to no. would be to think about like children's books and children's movies. Because those are the ones that do mm -hmm. the most interesting job. Uh, yeah. horror, horror is, I know I went to Stephen King instantaneously and I always have to point out that there are elements in the movies that do better in the books but that isn't yeah. most of his movies are god awful if, if I ever had to watch uh, uh, Dreamcatcher again I'd fucking kill myself Dreamcatcher to be fair though was also not a very good book you know what pissed me off most though there, there was like there was like two chapters of good book in there there were two chapters yeah. of great book in there, and the yeah. rest of it was like, what the fuck is going on here? It's, I mean, the movie was Be Afraid of Your... Or the book, rather, was basically Be Afraid of Farts. Like, well, that well was a at, at first, and then it turned into this government conspiracy crap, and you're just like, oh, it was, God. And it was, like, bloated, and it felt like... I, I, know Steven, I don't think Steven he. King, I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even like that book. Well, if well, I he, remember, he always totes about how when he writes, he lets it organically go wherever it's gonna go. But the problem with that one is it went, and and it never stuck. And it was, it starts. That off was also with, the first book. I think though that's also the first book he wrote after he got hit by the by the truck, and something about I can't remember. I read something about it that. Because I was like, this is a freaking weird book, and I was reading about it, and ah, now I can't remember what exactly was up with it. But well, yeah, because the the beginning of the book, it has like it's kind of like it, where it's about people going back to Derry after all time, and I, it mm -hmm. really reads like a fucking sequel to it because it's like here's here's this cut back to them as kids and their good time, and then here they are as adults, and like yeah. oh this is this is fucking interesting, and then it turns into farting poop demon monsters and then it turns into government conspiracy then it becomes a chase book for like way too long the last yeah. 20 chapters is this stupid epic chase that just goes on and on and on and i'm like oh my god yeah it's quite a book uh quite a book and i've read it i i i i, I hate to say it i have read it once and then uh, at the time when i read it i was quitting cigarettes so i'm like maybe i just don't like it because i was i hated everything at the time but mm -hmm. then I re-listened to it on uh, our sponsor, Audible.com, uh, best books <laughs> online. Uh, I, I re-listened to it, and I still fucking hated it, and I still had no idea what was going on. Yeah, uh, that's about right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Wizard of Oz is better than the books. I've only I've only thumbed through the books, and they're a little. You know what though? Those books I've read them as an adult. They're pretty com. They're I mean. They're imaginative, but they're also some of the most tedious, poorly written. I yeah. mean, they're, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really excited as an adult because um, one of my all-time favorite films is Return to Oz, mm -hmm. and so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some of these books just to, and then, yeah, you're, you're completely right. They're, 
uh, I guess tedious. I didn't think of it, but tedious is precisely the appropriate word right there. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're obviously kids' books, but they're they're really <laughs> they're kids' books from the turn of the century. Yeah, they are definitely. And I actually was having a conversation about like. Um, playing in other worlds the other day with some other writers and like what other writers thought of you know um writing new stories set in previously established worlds that are in the public domain stuff like oz and wonderland and somebody did bring that up where they're like you know it's i don't see anything wrong with it if you have a good story in that world especially since a lot of those don't hold up anymore even though they have imaginative ideas and everything the writing doesn't hold up and so yeah. So uh, speaking of, speaking of writing, uh, I, I had a critique on my writing that made me uh, laugh hor- mm-hmm. hor- horribly because uh, it was the most complimenting. I, I get I get a lot of I, I get a lot of uh, very uh, complimenting com- uh, kind of critique where it's like you know I really like this this and this this but that needs work or this is too descriptive I you know but you didn't do anyways. Uh, the compliment that I got was. Uh, I love everything about this. I love the characters to death. I'm really invested in these characters. But this world you've built is so unrealistic. This town seems so so far-fetched and out of touch. And the irony being that the town is based after the town that I grew up on. So I, I'm literally writing from my own experiences. And it's just like, ah, these people seem so out of touch and homophobic. Like, nobody's really like that. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. So that was a, that was a fun little uh, thing, but yeah. I didn't know you wrote. Yeah, I, I write a uh, ludicrous amount, uh, way too much, mm. and, I, and I and I insert my writings yeah. in places where they probably shouldn't go. I have not written anywhere near as much as I want to write lately. In fact, I've been. <laughs> this is weird to say, but I've been that kind of depressed lately where I get. Uh, angry and bitter about really petty, stupid things. Like, I've been listening to a really great podcast called um, The Wicked Library that is, uh, they read short stories by horror writers and then they interview the horror writer at the end of the podcast and then they talk to them about, you know, writing and everything. And listening to those interviews, I'll be like, God damn, lucky freaking people. They get, oh, they they get three hours a day to just do nothing but sit at their computer and write. Must be freaking nice because I'm here at work. I got a bills to pay. I just get so freaking angry. I have to shut it off. <laughs> Uh, There's a podcast I've been listening to called Magic Lessons on Maximum Fun. Oh, that's such a... They have so many... I haven't heard the podcast, but Maximum Fun has good stuff on it, so... Yeah, I I only listened to one episode so far with uh, Neil Gaiman, and they they talk to, like, some listener about their problems creatively. Mm -hmm. Creativity... No, creatively. Mm -hmm. And, uh... And then they kind of talk to like a professional, somebody in the, in that industry, I suppose, in this case, Neil Gaiman, mm-hmm. and then try to like figure out solutions to the problems and, and stuff like that. It's a really good podcast. Ooh, that's so, I'm going to, I'm going to subscribe to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hate to just like advertise other better podcasts on this podcast, but please, please do. Yeah, I, I mean the sure. whole the whole premise of this podcast was just uh, I believe before it became whatever the fuck it's become was like let's do a podcast where we talk about ice cream social and I was like that's terrible <laughs> oh I forgot about that uh, well no, I didn't say that well. was terrible but I was I was very I was very uh, <laughs> I was sort of antagonistic and like I'll just do whatever <clears throat> and and then of course because I'm a terrible I'm I'm basically Hitler but. Uh, but more racist. Well, I wasn't gonna say. Anything. I I know. Uh, you you could you could you could say it. I'm I'm John Tron. But uh, is it Magic <laughs> Lessons with Elizabeth Gilbert? Is that what you were listening to? Yes. All right. Sweet. And she wrote to uh, Eat Pray Love too. Cool. And, and so she knows what she's talking about. And let's say right now, Neil Gaiman, absolute badass. Fucking that guy mm-hmm. is amazing. Like it seems like he he wets his toes and everything. Elaborate. Uh, well, okay, so for a guy who got most of his fame with fiction and comics, 
he does a lot of like journalism. Uh, he's worked with magicians. He's worked with filmmakers. Like he's such a jack of all trades. Uh, he's done yeah. voice acting work. He's done so much shit. Like like if you look at look at the accomplishments of Neil Gaiman, and you're just like this guy doesn't stick to one thing very often. He I mean he does writing well. He's an incredible writer. Uh, he did the Sandman comics using an art set of, of people who basically did superhero comics and somehow made the most gothic novella ever from this, given that these are people who do X-Men normally. And, and somehow he took that style and, and, and uh, brought it into all the kids with the long hair listening to The Cure. And that's yeah. an impressive feat. And, 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 and the books are incredible. Like, anybody, anybody, what, what's, wherever, just find a Sandman book and read it. I guarantee you, somewhere in that massive collection, you'll find something you like. Whether he's he's talking about lore, which is another thing, he's a fucking history buff or a lore buff or whatever. Like, Neil Gaiman is incredible. He's got a good sense of humor. He's he's a fucking... He, he seems to be a philanthropist. Like, I don't know. I really, really look up to Neil Gaiman because you keep finding it like he's quirky and funny and nice, but he's, he's very... I don't know. I have a bit of a... I still haven't read Sandman yet. I am going to say something that most people always kind of are surprised at, considering the things I like in life, but I still have not read a single Neil Gaiman book. I keep meaning uh, mm. to, and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Sandman I mean, or anything. I mean, it's, it's, worth, your, it's worth your time, but... Uh, mm -hmm. A good thing is Neil Gaiman, if, if I'm, if I'm going to suggest, especially in, in, the, in the situation where you don't spend a lot of money, Neil Gaiman tends to often do Humble Bundles. Um, yeah. Wait for a humble bundle because for like twenty bucks you can get all of his work. Oh, cool! Hmm. And uh, wow. uh, he did he did Coraline. He did the book for Coraline and, and such. Mm -hmm. So there's there's plenty out there that that will appeal to anybody. But yeah, he's he's, he's great. He also had he also had the best best Simpsons cameo ever, right next to Stan Lee. Hmm. Where uh, yeah, he uh, he he thieves the the protagonist's book and. Yeah, I thought that was well done. Anyways, uh, yeah. So we seem, to, we seem to be in the conversation of books uh, today. Any, any, uh... Any, uh, what? I, <laughs> I think I haven't read many. I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot to contribute. Rick. All right, well, we can talk about other stuff. It's fine. I played Dungeons and Dragons. How, how did that go? How did that go? Yes. Give us yes. Um, I'm not good at it. I don't know all the things I'm supposed to add. Isn't when I this roll. only like your I'd second have... time, though? Uh, first time was last okay, week. Okay, so doesn't it? Second yeah, time say, was yesterday. Yeah, so doesn't it take like a lot of time to learn to be good at it, though? Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. it does, and I argued that, and then they uh, we did a a fun little thing yesterday, which I mean, it is it was a fun idea, where uh, we're trying to. Like get everybody to practice being a, a DM, mm -hmm. and so they wanted everybody to do like a three room dungeon, and just take turns, like being uh, the quote unquote mad god, and it's it works canonically because like the god is crazy and will just shift personalities. Uh, but also, I don't even know how to play regularly. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I definitely don't know how to dungeon master. Man, hmm. I, uh, I uh, stuff like that always makes me cringe ridiculously. As somebody who's played D&D &D a lot, I mean years of Dungeons and Dragons under my belt, I always hate those gimmicks like that, where it's like, okay, we're going to do a group exercise. I'm, uh, one, of my, one of my personal horror stories was that uh, we played with a the GM's girlfriend, who was really into the acting portion, and uh, she would like to take people outside, away from the group, and play her character talking to you. And it was, like, really uncomfortable to sit there alone with this person <laughs> who's, like, intensely acting and voicing and, and behaving as their character while you're just sort of standing there with a the cigarette locked between your lips and going, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes! <laughs> How do you think we're going to steal the crystal from them? Uh, I don't know. My character's got a pretty big... Your character? I've got a really high sneak stat, so I'll see what I could do. 
Are we done? <laughs> like I, I, I mean, I, I have, uh, I, 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 I totes have balls. I'm okay with being ridiculous. I've, I have been on stage wearing a dress and a Michael Jackson, Jackson shirt singing, but there are situations where I get cringy, and Dungeons and Dragons tends to bring them out of me the most. Especially when you get stuck with ambitious GMs who are like, we're going to dress up as our characters now. And it's like, no. Oh, God. No, we're not. Like, can we just, you know, I, I like uh, I like the pizza and beer aesthetic. We're basically just yeah, a bunch of people. Yeah, I mean, that's the main reason that I do it. Yeah. Is just hang out with friends and drink beer. Right. Yeah. And, and you, you just sort of play a dumb role-playing game and everybody just sort of has too much fun. And I don't mm. know, I sort of got out of it because it turned into this weird subsect of friends who were like way too uh, and, and theatrical and, and I'm just not like that I was clashing a bit with other people in like the meta game where there were sleeping gorillas and uh, we had we had six people in our party and uh, they were suggesting okay we're gonna try to sneak past them and I'm the only guy that's like okay statistically not everybody is going to make that roll. We're going to wake them up. We need to just fucking get the drop on them right now. And they're like, you, you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know to do that. Like, fucking fine. And then we had to fight the gorillas anyway. Uh, and and, and the, the problem with that is your argument is completely valid, but you just wor worded it wrong. If, if you wouldn't have said statistically, if you would have said, like, I think we're going to wake them up, different. Like, it would make more mm -hmm. sense if it was like, but because you, you used the word statistic, you broke the law. Yeah, well, I, I was also pointing out, like, they're there, so we're probably going to have to fight them. So we might as well just do it. Like, I don't know, I don't know how I know this, guys, but I feel like this is significant. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, I can't, I can't do that as a character. What's your intelligence at? But I don't, it's, God, it's, like a 11 I don't know oh that's that's only slightly above average so you, you wouldn't be thinking about stuff like that you wouldn't be that strategic yeah. tell you, I tell you uh, the meta game though the funniest thing is when somebody actively hates you even after the game because of the meta game uh, <laughs> which has happened to me before there was a situation where we had a group of people most of them I didn't know they were uh uh it was like friends of a friend of a friend who was looking for a player and I joined in because they were doing a Call of Cthulhu game and I'm, I'm a huge HP Lovecraft nerd and uh, mm -hmm. my character was basically Cillian Murphy's uh, Scarecrow so mm -hmm. that, that was my that was sort of the shorthand for like okay if you want to think of my character just think about Cillian, Cillian Murphy as the Scarecrow and so I, I tried to behave the character in that way and somebody found that to be evil and, and they were really upset like they were upset at me because the character was was bad and they didn't like my ideas in game, and they, and they were just like I was I was laughing up because I didn't care. They were like I think we should kill that guy, and then I was like okay, and I didn't really do anything. I was just sort of making up to suggestions, and then the game ended, and the person was still glaring at me, and they were like really upset with me because <laughs> <laughs> like like physically after the fucking the, the lights are on and everybody's packing up their gay little fanny packs and dice and shit and leaving I didn't like what you did <laughs> yeah it was just, oh, I don't I saw what you did <laughs> of course I'm gonna share the cringiest story ever is uh, that same group later on decided to do a sort of variant on the X-Men with which it was a superhero group and I, and I, I am not a big superhero guy so mm -hmm. they really wanted me to join in uh, because many of the people there I liked and they liked me and they really wanted me to join in. And I was like, okay, but if I'm going to make a superhero, I'm going to go slightly untraditional. And they're like, that's fine, that's fine. As long as you've got some kind of superpower or whatnot. So uh, I actually took a couple of days. I, I, I illustrated up this beautiful character. My character was uh, essentially a sentient uh, scarecrow who was the embodiment of Halloween, and my, my traits involved things like having to only eat candy in exchange for doing my stuff. It was, it was quite quirky. I was quite enjoying it, and I named my character Samhain. However, I decided it would be cute if his name was Sam Hain, because that's how you spell Samhain. Yeah. So when I introduce my character, somebody in the group goes ghastly pale. She gets very pale, and she goes, 
It's pronounced Samhain, and you shouldn't use his name in vain. <laughs> Actually, it's Chimera, but go on. <laughs> and, and I was like, Ex- excuse me, and, and she's like, in a previous life, I had to deal with him. And I, and I didn't know what she was talking about, and eventually I realized she wasn't, she wasn't lying. I mean, she was, but she was a Wiccan who believed that she, not her character, a person who believed that she had had these previous lifetimes, that she had... Oh God! And that she had oh, God. she had personally been involved with the druidic cult of, cult wow. of Samhain, and she explained all of it to me. And it was all because I made I made a superhero scarecrow named Sam Hain. That was what wow. started this. It, is, it was the most awkward, uncomfortable. Like it, it was like a thirty minute exchange of her explaining about how uh, uh, Samhain is is sort of like vengeful and doesn't care for for these sort of. And it, it was like. And her and her husband was there, and he was like consoling her, like it's okay. He didn't know, and and I uh, I have never been like all of my uncomfortable, all of my awkward. Everybody has awkward stories about going on a date. All of my awkward stories are about Dungeons and Dragons, about being realizing <laughs> I'm in a room full of people who are nuts, who are far crazier than I am, and I'm just like I gotta leave. I've I, I like. Uh, a really gay thing I used to do all the time because I am a fur faggot is that I used to wear a bunny tail everywhere. Uh, this is something I did because I Ooh, thought it was yeah. adorable. Uh, within this group of person, a, a 40-something-year-old woman came up and fondled my ass because of the bunny tail. Yeah. How old were you? I was like 17 or 18. Oh, and good she, lord. She sort of walked up and fondled my ass because of the bunny, bunny tail and she's just like, uh, why are you wearing a bunny tail? And, and I'm like, cause I like it. And she's That's like, she, she just started to like grill me about it intensely. It was the most, ah, people are fucking nuts is what I'm saying. Well, you're the one wearing a tail. True, but, but cosplay <laughs> is not consent, damn it. <laughs> that, that is a little cr- literal crime. Yeah. Like you can't touch another person's tail. Yeah, you can't touch their ass beneath their tail. <laughs> God, fucking. I mean, good. was it flagged up? That's an invitation. I, I, it was. Uh, it, it, it wasn't like a good tail. It was just like a big white poof ball. So it doesn't really flag up or down. It was. It was. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't quite hip to the. Uh, made from uh, pipe cleaners. Uh, it, it was made from a Halloween costume that I bought. It was just a little poofy cotton tail. Yeah, it was like a poofy cotton tail that I just latched to the back of my my belt. Uh, I had a tendency in my my house on years to, to hang stuff from my belt for a while i had a <laughs> for a while Listen i had a i had a i had a red rooster uh hanging by a noose from my belt uh like a whole rooster like it was a, it was it was a beanie baby of a rooster uh and, uh-huh. and so that way anybody who pointed it out i could say that's my cock uh I thought I was being cute. Did you have it, like, right in front of you? Yes, or yes. On the side of you? And, and it hung out. And, and of okay. course, to follow the rest of the visual, there are, there are pictures of me at the time, you know. Marilyn Manson t-shirt, long hair, makeup, and striped socks, and a big red stuffed animal hanging from my crotch. The reason why I stopped doing that, though, is I was in line at a grocery store, and a, like, six-year-old kid in front of me turns around and starts fondling this thing right by my genitals uh, causing, <laughs> causing me to leap back in horror because this kid wants to play with this toy that's dangling from my belt I uh, I went home and that's I never... also a crime on your part Yeah, well I never never wore that again. I was like Oh, no, no, that's not a toy there, sweetie Oh, real quick I have one more story before we get into the to our uh, fan fiction. I was... Oh, yeah, we have to do that. I was in Barnes & Noble the other day. It, Ace just reminded me. I was in Barnes & Noble the other day and I was and browsing... somebody the... fondled you? No, no, I didn't get fondled, <laughs> but the the little kid part, just bear with me here. Um, I was br- I was in the uh, graphic novels section because Barnes & Noble has more graphic novels than my local comic book store. And I was there... <laughs> Funny. And a mom and a kid come over. Little kid. Probably, like, maybe five or six or something like that. Not very old. Uh, maybe a little... I can't tell. I have a hard time telling kids' ages. But anyway, uh, with a Barnes & Noble employee. And the Barnes & Noble employee goes, you know, here are all our graphic novels, yada, yada, yada. Uh, he can pick things. And then she kind of quietly says to the mom... Um, 
But I would kind of just, just so you know, I would kind of let you know that a, a lot of these books might not be age appropriate. And she pulls one down off the shelf and it's got, you know, scantily clad Harley Quinn on the cover. And she goes, you know, just like this, for example. And the mom goes, oh, okay. But then the mom walks away and leaves the little kid there with the graphic novels. And he's kind of pulling them off the shelf and kind of looking through them and then putting them back. And I'm thinking to myself... As a comic book fan, I'm really excited that there's a little kid here wanting to get into comics, but the employee was kind of right. Like, most of this stuff is going to go... Not only is it going to have, like, blood and, like, half-dressed women and everything, the writing's kind of going to go right over his head. Like, he's not going to be interested, but, like, in my head, I knew there were some more kid-friendly comics on the shelf, and I'm thinking to myself... I kind of want to just start handing this kid books he might read, but I also don't want someone to go, oh my god, look at that pervert handing that kid comics over there. <laughs> I, I've got a lot more comics in my car if you want to check them right. out. Right, like I was very aware of the fact that I'm like a 30-year-old guy and this was like a little kid and that I would maybe look kind of weird going, hey kid, you want to read a really good comic? <laughs> Oh god, it's called, yeah, it's called yeah, Sex by Nirvana or and Madonna. He, he, and then I got real sad because he walked away without getting anything and I'm like, well, that's because he didn't, it's like if I had handed him uh, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, which is based, which is a comic based on a kid's cartoon, maybe he would have read it and been like more into comics and I kind of got sad when he walked away and didn't buy anything. Yeah. I'm like, well, there's a kid okay. who might never enjoy comics in his life now. You could have touched that kid. Yeah, I could have. Exactly. You could have touched him. I could have reached out and touched Faith. <laughs> I, uh. Hey, that's such, a, such an interesting situation to be in, because I know I've been in situations like that before where you just want to say something, but you can't. Right. Because you're just like, man, like, if only, if only somebody had said something to me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So, should we read our story now? Since we've uh, only got one chapter left? Do, will it stretch a half an hour? Or do we want to, do we want to talk about times that I children are not interacting with us awkwardly? Oh, Seth, do we is, still, is the child ever awkwardly interacted with you? Do we still have half an hour um, left? We got about, yeah. We, we've only oh, been wow. for 36 minutes, so that's why. Oh, I'm, wow. So maybe, okay, maybe. I'm counting it, the minutes. I don't think it will. It's pretty short. Let me look at it real quick. It's pretty, it is pretty short. Yeah, and we're not going to start anything yet. We, we had a few suggestions before, and. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, I don't recall any of them, but we'll figure it out. Oh, I think it was uh, Teen Titans was one of them. Oh, yeah, that oh, won't yeah, go half Teen Titans. <laughs> Teen I, Titans I think, could be fun. Yeah, I, I think because it's got a nice diversity of, of uh, character. I still have yet to see Teen Titans go. I know it's the most controversial show. Ooh, it's not my cup of tea at all. I I I, I it's, think it's fine. There's it's such a it's such a like bipolar opinion on that show, and I'm really curious about it. It does have because, a really like yeah, you're right. It has one you either really like it or you really don't. The, 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 People just don't seem to like it as far as like how it compares to the last show. Like just compare it to itself. The, well, I'll the, say the, this. I'll say this. It's fine. As a little kid's show, which is maybe yeah, why... Yeah, it's a completely different audience. Yeah, which is maybe why I have no interest in it, because it's definitely on a level where, at least to me, like, some cartoons are on a level where they're enjoyable to little kids and to grown-ups, and then there Gravity are some falls. cartoons... Yeah, and then there are some cartoons that are just on the level where they're only interesting to little kids, and I personally mm -hmm. feel like Teen Titans Go! is only f enjoyable to little kids, but... It makes me laugh sometimes. I mean, it's very it's very self-aware. It likes to poke fun at uh, superhero tropes. And there's a few mm -hmm. episodes making fun of like how gritty modern superheroes are. Yeah. And there uh Robin is like we have to be more serious and all of a sudden the total the uh the art style completely changes. They're have yeah. like all these muscles or jaws are just sharp and grizzled. I think, uh, I think it's funny. I think Rebel Taxi had the best breakdown as to why it doesn't work. And I think his was the, the one that I, I, I was like, okay, that makes more sense. He pointed out that there's something inherently wrong with the show, which, again, I have not seen the show, so I don't have an opinion. But his opinion was, there's nothing inherently wrong with the show. It was just, with the amount of comedy-based programming for children there exists right now, why did they have to get rid of an action show to replace it with another comedy show? When there is a, a deficit of uh, action or adventure themed TV shows. 
I think in... They didn't get rid of it to replace it with that. Yeah. It's just, they, it just is not there anymore, and then they made a new show. <laughs> Gra- it's, it's Grandma didn't It's not that they decided, die. hey, we need to, we need to... It's, it's not that they, like, said, oh, this show's not working, let's replace it. Well, there was the, the show got canceled, and then they decided to make something else with that IP. Right. Interesting right. about it's not that they could have just made the show again. That the show is already done. Well, no, it ended on a cliffhanger. I think that's another frustrating thing is it ended with the expectation that there would be more. Wait, in the do you mean Teen? T- I don't know. No, Teen I, I, Titans I, 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 didn't end on a cliffhanger. Young Justice ended on a cliffhanger, and Young Justice is actually coming back. Teen Titans Young and Young Justice, Justice yeah. are two okay. different shows. Okay, oh, you know what? I, I will, I will, I will, I will mm. wait to withhold uh, as I because I've been going, you know, I've been going down the list and I've been rewatching a lot of mm. cartoons and trying to develop my own opinion on it. Like, I don't know. At this point, I like cartoons a lot better than programming designed for adults. It's hard for me to get into programs designed for adults, but I find it's quite easy to watch Gumball and draw. So I've been enjoying that a lot more. Uh, you know, I, I I don't I don't know how I feel per se about uh, uh, Teen Titans Go. I guess I'll have to. That's wait probably to see a good idea. <laughs> well, I'll give it a shot. I mean, like I said, I'm very I'm very easy to please when it comes to media, so I'm not necessarily uh, I don't necessarily have a confident opinion, but I like it. Yeah. Also, yeah. I do have to watch it because I babysit. Yeah, as, as, as long as as long as it's not that uh, Steven Universe show, which now I officially will never watch. Why? What is That's it? Been fucking ruined uh-huh. for me. I, 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 it's it's just a very it's the fan base. Yeah, the fan base is the most cancerous thing ever. The fact that they 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 try to get a small child to kill herself over drawing what was it hetero a, char- a gay characters being straight, and they're like kill yourself. Uh, it might have been like a fat character they drew skinny. Yeah, or something like that. I think that was it. Yeah, the the show has such a, a message of tolerance that people just take like a fascist regime. That that I just I really want nothing to do with it. It's been it's been spilling over a lot, and I've been encountering a lot of these people firsthand. I'm like, wow, these people really are a cancer. Like they're they're little kids who don't realize that in their attempt to be open minded, they're actually quite close-minded more and more like i'm interacting with all these artists from all these different creeds and different uh you know i've got at least three personas of art that do entirely separate stuff and like i'm learning more and more that perverts tend to be nice people we do our best you're welcome meanwhile people who (laughs) yeah well i mean like like most perverted artists i know actually invest money back into communities they actually are are very friendly to their fan base even really condescending ones who have this persona of being kind of like 4chan funny tend to be very nice and really understanding meanwhile there's like these tumblr artists who who are doing very like you know i'm drawing gay black lesbian trans women and they're the the meanest people you will ever know they, they they leave comments like somebody goes, I really like your artwork. You'll see responses like, well, because you're white, that isn't even a compliment. And I wish you would never look at my stuff again. And you're like, whoa. Like, why is it that the guy who's like drawing fucking Dexter having sex with Dee Dee from Dexter's lab is this nice, wonderful guy who's like really caring and compassionate. And the person who draws this like really tolerant and like, almost beautiful art because you're like man the message here is beautiful is a fucking condescending prick and i'm learning more and more like art communities are all like that like uh, people who who are in these fandoms are so like cancerous it's it's it blows my mind how much i keep falling back and i'm finding more maybe it's because i'm just a pervert but it's just every single time i interact with people who do perverted art it's they're they always surprise me i'm always surprised at how like giving and fucking compassionate they are versus any time I, I, I get very condescending messages from time to time like oh I really like your stuff but you know it, it seems awfully a shame that you're only putting two attractive characters together uh... like I'm sorry 
Like, like I, I like, I like, I like the fact that you're doing art that has a positive homosexual message. But how come they have to be traditionally attractive characters? And it's like because I don't fucking know because that's how I drew it. I don't, I don't appreciate that's how that I pursue social justice. Is I, I jack off to. Uh to black characters <laughs> ugly black, black characters, black characters. Yeah. i make myself do it yeah i i just i don't get it like and i'm not and i, I don't want to get on this this huge like oh sjw's blah 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 it's just my own personal experience in art and and in and, and, and cartoons and whatnot like more and more i'm dealing with these people who are just uh, their their opinion is so hazardous and they're so like oh well i I like that you you have this sort of pro homosexuality vibe, but I don't like that you sexualize this and this and they, they, like like putting a character in socks is sexualization for some reason. It, it isn't where the sock sits or how much a leg is showing. It's just like putting them in socks is a very sexualized thing. It's like fuck off. Like now yes, you're just, but you're just, a, you're just, you're what just do reaching. you think of the new Ghostbusters? I don't get the argument of like. <laughs> <sighs> okay, no, he didn't even bring it up. It wasn't even the one that brought it up. I don't. I don't get the argument of like uh, putting trans characters in porn, sexualizing them. Like that's just what. What do you want? I've I've always wondered that too because it's something that I've I've had to cope with because it's something that I'm I'm kind of attracted to in a weird way. Without without you know not trying to say how the sausage is done, but like I have a weird in ambiguity that I'm attracted to. I, I like really effeminate guys and sort of semi-masculine women. I like that that gray zone, so I find myself particularly uh, enthralled by artistic depictions of transgendered characters in porn, and it's not a good thing because it's the sexualization and it's the victimization and it's mm -hmm. gender, etc., etc., and I, I, don't, I don't know how you get around that. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you get around it by just saying, I like chicks with dicks, and then what are they going to say? Like, well, that's not a trans character, it's a chick with a dick. That's Futanari, or whatever you fucking say. I don't know. I, I know what you're talking about. Again, this is something that I've personally had to dealt with, deal with before, and it's quite... Uh, mm. It's quite upsetting, because it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to defend yourself, or, or even defend the artwork to that. Like, what do you... Like, okay, I'm sorry that you don't find somebody like that to be like they shouldn't be sexualized you're you're a monster for doing that i don't like that you're depicting a fake character as being like this like i'm sorry you know it, when it comes to real porn some of the best stuff is transgendered people who are quite frankly making it's a true. pretty good amount of money off of it so <laughs> like I don't know why you've got an issue, but they're not real trans. Real trans, like I don't fucking. And I'm not trying to be down on trans people per se. It's just I am. Yeah, fuck those people. Fuck, yeah. Fucking you, gender. Yeah, I don't. How I don't dare care. they try fucking to use the wrong bathroom? Although, I, although, uh, yeah. Oh God. You know, I uh, I'm oh, that was an interesting no, thing. Have no. you read that? The, the actual no. what the what the real dialogue is no uh, no and I don't want to discuss it here <sighs> okay yeah I mean I have but I don't want to discuss I, it I know here. I know I'm I'm uh, summarization so I don't leave it hanging I just I don't like Trump but I wish people would read like I wish that they wouldn't just come to a brass assumption and be like ah this is the worst thing ever this is literally the Holocaust when headlines it, if it doesn't uh, fit in a tweet it's like, not real you, news like <laughs> I I know and and that that actually thank you because that, that that brings it to the point that is the real point I just fucking wish people would actually read the source they wouldn't just look at the. Uh, Trump caused genocide to trans people? Question mark. PewDiePie is Nazi? Question mark. It's just like, please. Just... You said we wouldn't talk about. I know about we wouldn't, but it's it's in that. I don't mean I don't want to talk or about Trump. PewDiePie or Trump. I don't want to talk about them. I'm just saying we just need to get past this fucking. I can't Speaking of Dexter fucking Dee Dee. Yes. Uh, Thank there's you. There's another bit of Rule Thirty Four, brother, sister, incest that we probably yes, are we not will. Even yes, we get will. To the we're gonna breeze through this. We're gonna breeze through this. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Gumball we and Anais? Is it gonna be Gumball and Anais? I hope it's Gumball and Anais. All right. Yeah. Uh, can I love my sister? Artist 
uh, bye after Wendy breaks his heart. I don't know why Tony always reads the description of each of these things, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it. After Wendy breaks his heart, Dipper receives comfort from his little sister Mabel. However, all of them are affectionate of comfort makers of falling in love with the warning pincest. Lemons and strong language, I don't own anything to babble. Chapter 6. The Tragic Mystery. <laughs> Whew. The next morning, Mabel was the first to wake up with a cold and a killer headache. Dipper wasn't sick, however, which made him eligible for taking <laughs> well, care I of her. I bet he's going to take twin. care of her. But... I hope he does. Yeah. It'd be terrible if he does. Vagina. Gross. Uh, why did you just assume she has a vagina? Mabel could be trans, okay? Oh. Uh, <laughs> but when Sorry. But when you <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Woo! But when he woke I apologize. But when he woke up, instead of taking care of her, first he went downstairs to see his mom and dad. Mandy was still on the couch, sobbing with a crumpled up Kleenex in her hands, and Daniel was kneeling down in front of her, trying to console the sobbing woman. Curious, mm, Dipper mom, decided to investigate dad. the scene. Take a drink. <laughs> the What's brunette the matter? boy asked. <laughs> Mandy eyed her son. And gave him an indescribable look without speaking. Indescribable. <laughs> Can't even begin. <laughs> it was the look. most looky look in the look she of looks. Him. It's, it's, psych, it's a, a cyclopean look. Confused, Dipper looked up at his dad, hoping for an answer. The older man sighed and closed his eyes. I, 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 how else do I say this, oh, son? No. Uncle Stan died today! Oh. How what? is this gonna lead to fucking? What? Well, I'm sorry. I'm closing I'm sorry. down the shack and dying. <laughs> I was a, the whole reason I wanted to do Gravity Falls was so and I could voice fucking Uncle Stan. God damn it! I'm sorry, he's dead. I oh. hopefully, hopefully, Seuss is still alive. Uh, Dipper, this is gonna get real romantic. Dipper jolted when he's yeah. Dipper <laughs> jolted where he stood, and his brown eyes shrunk in shock. He could have sworn he fainted mentally and was about to do it for real, but then he remembered what came after fainting. <laughs> he... His dad having sex with him. <laughs> well, the, well, the boy's passed out again. Yeah, like. Oh. <laughs> Let me just take care of this. He would wake up. I mean, like... this is not the first time he told him that Sparkle Stan died. <laughs> he. He would wake up later thinking whatever he fainted over would be a dream, even though it clearly wasn't, and then he'd feel uh, even, even more even worse more than when worse. the news okay, first hit him. On. So he's... <laughs> I feel like somebody should put the Rugrats cue there. So, he stayed strong, but still <laughs> shuddered in fear and discomfort what? at the news. What? How? Mm. He inquired, gulping. Mandy still sobbed, but tried answering her son. We don't know yet, Dipper. We're still waiting for, 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 for results on the autopsy in the m m m m m m m morgue. The sobbing. Like how does this author knees, have knees? no other way to describe people than by their hair color? <laughs> The soft, the sobbing, dirty blonde lady choked. Oh, is this going to be a, a Stranger Things yeah, crossover? Would. That would make for a good <clears throat> fan fiction. N no, it really, <coughs> it really wouldn't. I guarantee you that okay. there's there's probably about a dozen of them already. Like Gravity Falls, Stranger Things. Uh, Dipper still couldn't believe Grunkle Stan was dead. He was only sixty-seven years <laughs> Wait, old and very what? spiteful what is as well. Being Spiteful have to do with not dying. Spiteful. What? What were? What I did no they idea. mean to say? Very. Uh, he had always <laughs> made jokes that his spitefulness kept him alive and full of spunk. And even though he oh, was okay, a greedy codger go. who usually didn't care about anyone except himself or money, but showed different many times, differently many times. Even though he was a greedy codger who usually didn't care about anyone except himself or money. But showed differently many times. Wait, Dipper and Mabel still Mabel. loved him. Dipper uh, thought, just remembering his sister's hey, condition. Hey, mom, What's dad, condition? Mabel is sick with a cold. He 
he spoke up. I guess we're gonna have to take care of this. Take okay. her out back, son. This caught both of the adults' attention and caused them to look at Dipper again. No! Oh, just great! Daniel groaned, rubbing his temples. Selfish Don't worry, bitch. I'll take care of her. Oh, Dipper told them, turning on. I keep waiting for Tony to take Dipper over. Dipper told them to turn into <laughs> I really am. Like, okay, I'm just kind of like. jumped in real quick. No! D Dipper jumped back and looked back at his mom. <laughs> no, God, why? Dipper jumped and looked back at his mom, who had halted him. She looked like, she looked like oh, her. Oh, no, mom knows I'm going to She looked like her heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love the term diddle. I love that so much. Like, I, I want to write a novel just so the sex scene could be, and then he diddled her. Uh, did, did I just oh, assume so it would be him and her? God, God. I'm so insensitive. She looked like... She look, I must have voted for Trump and PewDiePie. Looked like her heart had just jumped out of her chest and into her throat. Mandy, what's wrong? Are you all right? Daniel asked, placing his hand on it, his wife's shoulder. Mandy shakily looked up at her husband, who had a concerned look on ah. his face. She took a deep breath and calmed her bracing heart so that she could steadily... So she could talk steadily again. Ah, ah, I have something else for you to do, Dipper! You can go to the morgue and see if the results are back yet! Just Don't make him do it! Just tell them... Mandy and Daniel Pine sent you to check on Stan Pines. Okay. Oh, she instructed carefully. And see Mabel with her clothes off. Dipper thought, but was confused. Why would his mom not want him to take care of Mabel? <laughs> but, but what about Mabel? Mm. The bro natty boy asked, looking up at the stairs. <laughs> Your father and I will take care of him! But I Mandy don't answered. Think that, um... <laughs> she cut him off. <gasps> Just do as no, I'm no, telling no. you! Dip Dipper gasped and stepped back a little. This was not like his mom at all. Nevertheless. He nodded with indifference and slowly exited the shack without saying a word to either of his Go parents. Then. Meanwhile, <laughs> Mabel coughed lightly and opened her crusty brow. Her crusty oh, brow. God. <laughs> oh, 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 I'd like oh, to mention God. now that our sponsor is Bad Dragon. Uh, and opened her crusty brown eyes halfway. They look clouded and like they were gonna leak tears at any second. It's okay, Mabel! <laughs> yeah, oh, second. <laughs> Your father is making you soup, okay? <laughs> Mandy, who was sitting on the edge of the bed, assured her. Mabel smiled meekly, but then it faded. Well, where's Dipper? She whispered, her throat feeling sore. Mandy bit her lower lip in shame and arousal, placed her hand gently upon her oh no! spine, closing her eyes and inching forward. <laughs> the smell of whiskey strong on her breath, a familiar odor, the odor that her own father had about him when he took advantage of his child. She hadn't told Mabel about Grunkle Stan yet, and she didn't want to right now, considering that she was already sick enough. So, she went for the he best ran an answer. Errand for me. You'll be back soon. This calmed Mabel down, just knowing that her brother didn't desert her. Even though she knew deep down that he never that had never happened. Being sick made her have weird hazy thoughts about some things. That's good. I can't wait. Until he comes back. <laughs> the Brocken Nukanate girl whispered, feeling tired again. Mandy had a feeling she knew what was going on between the twins. 
But she wanted to test and dun, probe dun, the dun. two to see if she was right Ooh. or wrong. Once again, our sponsor's Bad Dragon. She hoped that it was the latter. <clears throat> hey, Mabel, how are things with you and Dipper? She inquired. Her daughter smiled as best as she could and sighed. He's so kind and caring to me, just like a true gentleman should be. Dipper Pines, my brother. Ha <laughs> ha, so handsome. I wonder what lucky girl will get him. She replied in a loopy tone. Mandy raised her eyebrows in curiosity as she pressed forward. Right now, Mabel was putty oh, in her God. hands. And she was gonna pump her dry. What the fuck? Dun dun. Meanwhile, Dipper's point of view. Dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dipper's point of view. Oh. Dipper. I still think that's. Isn't that. Oh, yeah, you're. Okay. All right. Us. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. I mean, it. it's all an eye. It's all in his head. So just, Never been to one, but so I, uh, I expected it. it to be scary. Not like uh, vampires in dungeons scary, but just like you know, a lab buzzing with people in. Oh, did oh, I cool. mention Harris? That oh, sounds like a cool game too, actually. Doctors, uniforms, something. Uh, as if I wasn't terrified of the doctor enough. Uh, don't tell anyone that I'm afraid of doctors, okay? Uh, who the fuck am I talking to anyway? Uh, anyway, I walked inside and it was just as I had expected. It looked like a laboratory crossed with a doctor's office with uh, people. Yeah. You're turning into Woody Allen! You really, you know, especially, especially with that, like, don't tell anyone, uh, it looked, okay? Uh, like a what? <laughs> Song Yi was like a laboratory crossed with a doctor's office and with people in those. Uh, sp I can't do Woody Allen. Uh, in those uh, specific outfits, bustling about, I uh, gulped and. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, you aren't a 12 year old girl, and so. I further in. Uh, a woman approached me and looked down at me. She spoke in a name, patient please. tone. Name, please. Fuck you. I gulped again and said my name. Uh, I'm here to see Stan Pines, my uh, great uncle, I added. The lady nodded and motioned for me to follow her. I did. When we got to the window where you're supposed to see the bodies, I started to feel nervous and uh, kind of horny. Uh, I'm kind of a coward when it comes to seeing dead people, and even though they really turned me on. And uh, when I looked in the window, I saw a lot of beds and, uh, with bodies on them, and even though they were all covered up, I still felt a sense of unease wavering over me so uh, yeah the lady uh, gestured for me to stop and uh, I did and she went into the room and uncovered one of the bodies and there he was Grunkle Stan oh no he was white and pale indicating that he had been dead for a while the sight was enough to make me cry and cry I did why why did this happen <laughs> because you've been fucking your sister. Kid. I love the author's note here myself. at the bottom. <laughs> Done. Okay. Do not ask me when the next one is coming. I am sick of hearing it. Please stop. I'm not canceling it. I'm just very uninspired with it lately. So who is Shad so Shadow? It Plus, it's very so rude. Frustrated with it that she killed Grunkle Stan. Is Shadow from like a video? Oh, I think he's from Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I think that's I, that's what I imagined. I hope so. Anyway, so uh, that naked, was the coffee uh, jelly hour this Sonic week, everybody. The yeah. What a horrible. terrible fucking story that was. No sex. No, that was that was. I, contender for the worst thing we've ever read. That was a very artful ending. Why? Just, just, uh, Why did this happen? No, oh, no. Their grunkle Stan. Like, where where do you think she would have gone with this? I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Like, where... They would have been drawn closer together over their grief and then had sex. But, and then their parents would find out that they'd be okay with it. I think, I think their parents would, like, try to tear them apart. Like, 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 well, I'm moving away Ooh, with Dipper, and then, conflict. and then, yeah, and then they're gonna be like, "No, we love each other," and run away. And Wendy will come back, or Wendy would have come back as the villain. Wow, oh, yeah, Wendy, Wendy would like thirty-one beg stories for, for Dipper crap. to take her. They I wonder if they're are. all this terrible. What's not? Ugh. <laughs> like I, I, 
I, I actually am offended. Like, like the story with Eric was terrible, but there was a certain fun to it. There was a kind of quirky goofiness that I that sort of grew on me, despite how bad it was. I liked its sort of sloppiness. Like, I, I, I was excited. This one just it lacked anything. There was no. She wrote. She she wrote a fan fiction for Happy Tree Friends rated T. <laughs> I wonder if it's a romantic fan fiction. Oh, jeez. Probably. Yep, says romance. Oh, how? Romance with angst. How does angst? Angst? The green moose I'm looked in no turmoil blood. as he had noticed the brunette girl was dying. It's rated T. Uh, I... Must emphasize. Yeah, I can't... I, I just... That was a weird... Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry we read it, but I'm just surprised how incredibly dull and and weird that was like i'm not a fine critique of fan art but i mean it definitely didn't have a, a squirming hecatomb of girls oh, that's for sure yeah <laughs> so yeah that's gonna do it for okay. this week's edition of the coffee us. jelly yeah, hour that, now by the power of my beard which i actually don't have a beard so by the healing power of my healing, not beard because i don't have one um the hearing, yes, by the healing power of my bare chin. chin. Your bare chin. That's the end. If it look, no, okay. What does if he it, say? If it if looks it, like no, magic, it, it's probably <laughs> science. Fuck! I screwed it up. If it looks like if it's not magic, it's science. If it looks like magic, it, it's not magic. It's science. Get used to it, Eric is the best. And his eyes are as red Eric as the devil's the dick. Say Something bye, like everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, bye everyone.